Hello everybody and welcome back to Knaves World Farm episode 17. It is truly amazing that we're already on episode 17. I feel like I've only just started and looking at our money, it also looks like we've only just started. But yes, this is why we're doing a few different harvests to actually bring in some more money. We've still got the barley in storage so we're basically just waiting for a great demand to be able to sell this at a really decent price. Uh, now coming on to that subject now, uh, what we make off this field will be put into storage because the price probably isn't right for the corn uh, so we need to maximize our profits here the Marshall trailer is 60% full that is being towed by the Fent 820 uh, so I just need to find the storage point it might be at the same place as the barley I'm not too sure but we need to put the auger out to unload this it's 82% full but we're not going to get around again without it being full so yeah let's just do that uh, also, as I record my videos two days in advance of them being published, I'm only just seeing the comments from episode 15, which was the first episode which I recorded with my new microphone. Uh, and I've just seen that a lot of people are saying that the machinery is too quiet and my voice is too loud. So from now on, I'm going to try and sort of equalise that, uh, try and make it as good as possible. But yes, yesterday's episode, you'll probably notice it was also quite quiet as well. But from today onwards, I'll try and improve that. It's quite difficult though, you've got to sort of, it's just a few gentle tweaks to the, the volume. Otherwise, your voice can be too loud, or the machinery can be too loud. There is a fine line between it being perfect. But as you can see, I'm cutting up the centre of the field here because this should allow us to be able to unload either side so for example if we fill the harvester when we're halfway up it won't matter where we are because we'll still be able to get the tractor and trailer under the auger without cr driving through the crops uh, which is never a good thing but the Fent is 85% full as it is just us today as it is in most single player episodes uh, I think we will fill it to the top otherwise it's going to be a bit of a waste of diesel going all the way to the other side of the farm just to tip like a, a three quarter full trailer I suppose it is more than that but you know 85% uh, so yeah it's, it's going to have to be full but I think this dominator is really proving itself you wouldn't have thought such a small harvester would be able to eat through the fields as quickly as this one is doing and the header I think is probably bigger than it would usually take as well it's way bigger than the serial header and yeah it's performing incredibly well it's maximizing its speed it's a shame it doesn't block uh, that feature has been implemented into a few harvesters in, in farming simulator for example the Lexian pack which I used on Sandy Bay single player that was fantastic it, it had the function uh, which allowed the header and the threshing unit to actually clog up if you went too quickly through a dense crop which I really like a few people might think that is annoying, but in real life, that can very easily happen. So, yes, I think that is a great feature. I always like the look of the corn at the brim of the trailer. You know, just a mound, which has been created by the harvester. Call me simple, but, yeah, things like that, they do look good. This will certainly fill the trailer. I think we could do with a bit more at the back. That should be pretty much there. And we're done. So I'm going to switch the harvester off. You shouldn't usually turn a harvester, or any machine off actually, with a turbo. But I'm not sure if this does have a turbo. Uh, I can't remember. And I should probably look it up, but it might be might be a bit basic for a turbo. I don't know. I really don't know. But yes, a lot of agricultural machinery, as you probably will know, are fitted or are fitted with uh, turbos these days. And you should let them cool down before you switch the engine off. But that is fairly irrelevant in Farming Simulator. It hasn't got that technical yet. Those will be the days. 
But yeah, I think there will be a lot to be said for any machinery damage which is implemented into FS, if it's ever implemented. Uh, I think it really should be, because even games like ETS, although it's not visible damage, you still can damage the vehicle. And uh, even if it is the, just the same principle in Farming Simulator, I think it's still a lot better than having no damage at all. Because like in Farming Simulator you could drive into a tree at top speed and come off no worse than before you crash into it. So yes, it does need a bit of work there I think. But I think it is down here, the tipping point. Can't say for sure, but you'd have thought it'd be the same place as the barley. We do really need to work on field 20. What I really would love to do, as I've said before, is plant every field that we own and then harvest them all together. It's just there's going to be a lot of harvesting there and it might get a bit boring. Aha! Here we go. So it's good that the storage point has been put into the map because I know it isn't that common in the UK. Uh, and also, it's been thought of clearly because the storage point is smaller than the common crops such as barley and wheat. Now we've just got the problem of me turning around in here. Ah, that is an issue. Lucky it's a small trailer, but it is also a very tight yard. I think if we go into here, pull forward and then go back. Straight back. Some days my driving in reverse is horrific. In fact, some days my driving in forwards is horrific. But other days I can like go straight for it and get there in one without having to pull forward. Today is not the day though. In fact, today is a fairly miserable day. I have crashed into the barrier. And I probably should be taking more notice of that front loader as well. Come on, third time lucky. There we go. So that is indeed the storage point. It isn't the cell point. And I'm guessing that place next to it is for the canola. Canola? Got to get my words out today. I think it is, but I'm not too sure. Yes, I'm calling it canola, but yes, obviously in the UK, it is usually called oilseed rape. Or rapeseed. But back to the field. We've got to get this done. Need to get it done today. I would say that field number 10 has progressed once again. I think the growth stage has increased and also field number 9 in fact, which we planted just yesterday, is already sprouting. That must be because we had to speed up time to get field number 1 ready to harvest. Which means that field number 8 is also sprouting. We should probably put something like lime on here as well. I'm going to have to keep a close eye on the soil moisture. And we should probably take the very unrealistic fertilizer bag out of the field. The fertilizer bag itself isn't unrealistic, but you wouldn't tend to leave a fertilizer bag in a field. So, uh, this time I think the best place to put this will be halfway up the field, because then it doesn't matter where we are, we'll be able to unload into it. Should be okay just there. We will turn the engine off, we will jump out and get back into the harvester. That is such a fitting trailer for the map. I think that couldn't really be beaten. Something about it is just perfect. It was obviously highly requested, that's why I'm using it in the first place. But yes, it is perfect size and a good colour. Hmm. Out of all of the uh, different things that you could say about it. I think really we don't need to change the combine because it does everything we need it to. It is old and it isn't very big but really there aren't many big fields on this map so I think it'd be kind of stupid financially to change it. We might do it one day but for now I am at least happy with it. Yep 
Yes, it is quite old, but I've still seen a farm, at least one farm in fact, to this day using a dominator like this as their main harvester. So this is just going to be like a finishing up episode today. We'll move on to something new next week. In fact, please do let me know what you want me to do. Obviously there's going to be some spraying and fertilising required, but I might do that off screen if you want me to. I won't bore you intentionally. Although it is all part of, all part of soil mod, so it does have to be done whether it's on or off screen. One thing which kind of has to be done again is... Well, haylage bales could be good, or silage bales, doesn't really matter which one. So we could do that, we could buy a wrap, although actually no, our baler does do wrapping. Mmm, it's a built-in feature. So we could do some some silage bales, haylage bales, I don't really mind which one. I think in the end Farming Simulator recognises them as the same thing anyway, so it really does not matter at all. But it seems, with Farming Simulator, the straw bales are not really worth much at all, like £312 maximum I think and then it goes to about 150 after that after you've sold a few and then hay bales are worth over a £1,000 each which is not too bad and again probably uh, a little on the unrealism side of things and then yes the, the silage bales are something like £6,000 each or more so yeah that is a bit pricey I wouldn't want to be buying my silage from that farm I think, yeah, to be fair, although it is good to be able to get the money fast for the machinery, I think the sil anything to do with silage is just too expensive. Is it really worth what it's worth in Farming Simulator? Because from what I've been told, it isn't. I've been told that the prices are ridiculously high, which, it depends which way you look at it. It could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing, but it's all personal opinion. We're pretty much done on this side, so let's just spin around and get that bit done. We are virtually full. I'm not keeping a close eye on that. I'm getting carried away in my discussion. So, that is full. What we need to do now is go and run over to our tractor jump into it and unload the harvester. Oh, suddenly goes quiet when you go out of range of the harvester. Right, so shut the door, start the engine. I always forget to turn the mirrors on. Today I did remember, but the mirrors are by default switched off. I'm guessing that is for lower spec PCs, not too sure. Uh, but yes, you can turn them on, as they are now. And this is our very first load into this second trailer load. Probably a bit too close there. That's better. So I'll put a bit in at the back and then move to the front. And we'll switch the engine off again, jump out. And there we go. So we're over halfway done. We are progressing very well. This is actually a, a relatively poor field. The nutrients and the, well, the, the nitrogen and the PK are fairly bad. Uh, I really have not been tending to these fields at all because they're pre-grown. But the fields which we're planting, obviously, I'd be able to keep a closer eye on. And I think, like it is in, in real life, if you put all the crops in together, you'd be able to keep a closer eye on them all. You do the same thing to them all. But obviously, it does get more complicated than that. You put more fertilizer in certain areas, in the bad areas. Like uh, the telematics you can get on some of the sprayers and harvesters. 
it will show you where the good and bad yield is and then you know where to put more fertilizer the next year it is all very technical but also very interesting okay I think this time as the tank is fairly empty we will cut up the middle because we know we're not going to get full we'll follow this line there's quite a visible line actually there between the two hmm what are they called are they just called stalks of crops or what uh, oh, maybe they're called plants not sure <laughs> it's probably a really obvious word I'm just sounding stupid but yeah point here is that the the nutrients is pretty poor appalling and the moisture isn't great so I do need to keep a close eye on it although having said that the pH is neutral which is good if the pH ever messes up like gets worse on either acidity or alkali we will have to put some lime down I'm not sure which one lime is is that or does that just neutralize either I've not done it before so anyone who is using saw mod please do let me know if lime is used for al acid and alkali or just one of them Yeah, it's certainly been humid in parts of England for the last few days. I've uh, literally just been caught in a thunderstorm. Not a very interesting story, but yeah, there's no uh, ending to that story really. It's just, I got caught in a thunderstorm. The end. <laughs> That's as good as the story gets. But yeah, it's good to get some rain for once. made to measure we're taking a perfect width here so as the harvester is 65% full and we're pretty much at the tractor we might as well unload while we're there just get to the bottom Our final section it does work very well and it, it just you know it splits up into different sections it's more manageable doing it this way if you split the field into lots of different bits usually I do it with the tram lines but obviously we haven't done the tram lines yet in our new fields we will be able to do it that way This is going to be a tough one. Will we be able to fit all of that in? Or will it be just slightly too wide? It's looking okay. It does get a bit wider further down, but at least we we'll have to come back as far. Anyway, yes, thank you to everyone who did tell me that the tractor volume was a bit too quiet. Uh, it's, it's always hard to get that right balance and hearing other suggestions from other people is always very helpful so I can just sort of tweak it here and there we are missing a bit there but yeah it's not too bad yeah uh, someone did actually say I've just been reading the comments uh, while I've been doing the harvesting and uh, yeah someone said that it sounds like I'm a lot closer to the microphone which I am the recommended distance for this microphone is 15 centimeters which is very close uh, which I was kind of concerned about because so you would have thought oh you'd hear like disgusting noises which is never nice to hear on a video uh, like swallowing and, and stuff well I suppose swallowing isn't necessarily disgusting but I have had complaints about that before uh, quite a lot in fact uh, the other one I used to have like half a meter away from me and if I went any closer it would just distort the sound so much so they are very different microphones oh there's me not concentrating again yes they're very different 
uh, but I think this one is still a lot better. It was slightly more expensive at, I think it was £130, which I think really is not too bad for a high quality studio microphone. Although you can obviously get them for like 15 or 20 pounds, but then you don't really get the quality. And they can be, well you can get the hissing sound, you get like a hiss in the background, which is always terrible. And that really wrecks a video. Uh, this one is, I think, ultra quiet, they say. So it is worth it, although yes, it's money. It is money and it's expensive. It is worth it because why put effort into the video in other areas if the sound quality is going to be terrible? It doesn't make any sense. So it, yeah, I think it is worth putting the money in just to uh, get a good microphone. So there it goes, folding up for our road transport. Let's get the auger out once again. I feel to be putting this auger out continually. And this is hopefully going to be a good fit, unless it's going to be annoying. We might have a tiny bit left in the harvester. Uh, but no, I think it will fit. I hope. I really hope. And if it does fit, which it looks promising, we'll fold the harvester up. Yeah, it was close, but yeah. 3.8% remaining. Right, there we go. All done. So, I think the tractor should probably follow the harvester. Otherwise, we might have a few collisions. There probably will be a few collisions anyway. Let's just hope for the best. I think, I really do think that that, yeah, I always forget the controls for it. I should have folded that up before. Anyway, we've just got to hope for the best that the tractor can follow us. We're going for a bush bush. Come on, tractor. Slow and steady. I think it scraped the trailer coming out of there, but overall not too bad. Whoop, that is not good for visibility. So obviously in the future we will return to these fields, we'll get them replanted, hopefully as soon as possible. But yeah, there's a lot of work to do. Field number 2 needs to be done as well. Field number 23 needs to be done. Field number 20 needs to be done. There are so many. I'm going to have to do a lot off screen I think, just to speed up the process. Otherwise it's going to be about 10 videos of just seed drilling. So I think yeah, the combine can go back to its usual position. I am fully aware of the header being off the trailer. Um, it tends to tip off, so I'm going to have to reset it at some point. Uh, let's lower the header down, there we go. And we will jump out. And yeah. Shutting the door. Oh, you can do it from the outside. That's really good. All secure. Except for the ladder got stuck there. But still, it is secure. <laughs> um, so let's get back into our fence, go and tip the final load of today. And we'll have to see how much we've actually managed to get off the field. Now there could have been some already in storage. In fact there was. It would have been roughly eight or 9,000 litres. But still, we'll be able to see how much it is. I'm guessing it's going to be around 50,000 in total. But we'll have to wait and see. This time I'm going for out of cab. Let's see if it's any easier. I usually do find reversing easier from in cab, but as this is so tight and there are so many hidden things you could hit, well, yes, <laughs> it, it isn't really much easier. This is a, t a challenging barn to reverse into, it really is, and I would not want to be doing it with a bigger trailer. 
but there it goes into the storage pit and once it's finished we will check and see how much we've got I'm gonna guess it around 50,000 uh, corn oh no I've under I've overestimated it 36,998 liters but still pretty good so that is it for today thank you for watching hopefully you've enjoyed the video and please do join me again next Friday for more on Naveswell Farm. Until the next video, thanks for watching and bye for now.